The Art of Rough Rain, Part 2, starting in Chapter 8, Part 2. Starts must be fair. Tell and show the wrestler what you want. Be forceful and take control of the start, or it will take control of you. Get the wrestler set, distinct pause, and blow the whistle. The pause should be approximately 1 to 2 seconds from when the wrestlers are set to when you blow the whistle. Don't allow either wrestler to gain an advantage. Ensure bottom is set correctly and doesn't move or jump before the whistle. Ensure top is set correctly. Don't allow slowly lowering hands to the back. Sliding the hands by the back, not touching, not pausing or bumping the bottom wrestler with the knee, causing them to jump. Work together as a team for a good, fair start. When to stand them up? Philosophy. While standing, a wrestler has up to a minute to set up and score points. Why in parterre do we as referees stand the wrestlers up in only a few seconds? There is set up time and points to be scored in parterre. Parterre is not a rest time. They need to work to score points in parterre just as they do while standing. If the offensive wrestler worked hard to score technical points, give extra recovery time. If the offensive wrestler did not work hard, give less recovery time. If the offensive wrestler is continuing to improve, no matter how slow the action is occurring, let them continue. This is based on progression, not speed. Additionally, parterre wrestling is the perfect opportunity to exercise time management. Top wrestler. If the offensive wrestler stops the action, looks at you, and wants to stand up, don't let them. They are trying to dictate the bout to you. Give them an action command. If they have tried to score and are unable, bring them up. Gut wrench, turns, tilts. When the action begins, lower your level to observe a fall. Figure 75 applies. Watch the attacking wrestler's breathing. Action typically begins, sucks air in, holds it, attempts turn. Action typically ends. Big exhale. Action is done. Make sure the bottom wrestler gets back to the initial position before the next scoring action. Parterre hooking. Watch for the bottom wrestler hooking the top wrestler's elbow. Parterre hooks are often missed or misidentified as top wrestler actions. The offensive wrestler will position him herself to kick themselves over the defensive wrestler, exposing their own back, in order to place the defensive wrestler in danger. A common error is to misidentify this action as a counterattack and reward the defensive wrestler. Example, in figure 77, Blue is the offensive wrestler, is positioning himself for a kickover. In figure 78, Blue kicks himself over, exposing his own back. In figure 79, Blue places Red in danger and should score points. The fall. No defensive falls. Within international wrestling, when the defensive wrestler is held by his opponent with his shoulders against the mat for a sufficient time to allow the referee to observe the fall. According to the National Federation of High School Wrestling Rules, a fall occurs when any part of both shoulders or scapula of either wrestler are in contact with the mat for two seconds. The offensive wrestler cannot pin him herself as you must have control for a fall. This is counterintuitive to folk style. Calling the fall. Three criteria for calling a fall. Control. Offensive wrestler in control. Compression. Shoulders being compressed into the mat. Indentation. Shoulder indentation marks in the mat. If you see the fall, relax and signal the chairman and never call a fall from your feet. Chairman must confirm the fall. Never call a fall until it is confirmed by the chairman. It is imperative you follow procedures when calling a fall. Taking a wrestler off their back. If an offensive 
legal hold becomes illegal without possible injury, the offensive wrestler must immediately adjust to make the hold legal. If they don't, stop the action and the offensive wrestler will lose their position. If there is the potential for injury, stop the action immediately. If a wrestler is complaining about an injury, quickly evaluate the situation. The younger the athlete, stopping the action for safety is a better option than hesitating. Restart accordingly. Chapter 10. The Protection Area Out of Bounds The boundary is not your friend. Do not let the wrestlers hang out on the edge. He who steps out first is out of bounds, unless they score. Evaluation note. A hand in the protection area is not considered out. Leg situations develop. Action that starts inbounds can finish in the protection area. Give the attacking wrestler a chance to complete an action move. Be patient when the action moves towards the mat, the edge. Don't have a quick whistle and stop a scoring action too quickly. Counterattacks cannot occur in the protection area. In figure 86, Red begins a throw. Figure 87, during the throwing action, Blue steps out of bounds. Because of Blue's step in the protection area and Red lands on his back, Blue should not score. Step back so you can see the entire action sequence. Parterre out of bounds. Based on the defensive wrestler's position, not the offensive wrestler. Defensive wrestler's head and shoulders in bounds. Legs in the protection area equal in. Defensive wrestler's chest beyond the boundary into the protection area equals out. One hand could possibly be called out if the chest is beyond the boundary line. Two hands in the protection area could possibly still be in bounds if the chest is not beyond the boundary line. If the wrestlers are in parterre on the edge and stand up in the protection area, blow the whistle and bring them back to the center mat. No points for step out. If the wrestlers are in parterre and stand up in the Zone central wrestling area and step out, then score the points for the step out. When the wrestlers go into the protection area, escort the wrestlers back to the center of the mat. This is your opportunity to talk to the wrestlers without giving an attention. Do not turn your back or take your eyes off the wrestlers, regardless of how quiet or respectful the bout has been. Punches, fights, etc. can erupt without any indication or provocation. There is a difference between attacking and pushing into the protection area. When evaluating the action to determine if a wrestler is attacking or pushing, there are several indicators that will differentiate between the two actions. A wrestler that is attempting to score technical points will typically attack his or her opponent using legitimate offensive techniques. The offensive wrestler will continue their attack and accompany the defensive wrestler into the protection area. A wrestler that is deliberately pushing his opponent into the protection area will typically have their arms extended, not use legitimate offensive techniques, and will stop just before the edge, not going into the protection area. There is a difference between counterattacks in or going into the protection area. When evaluating counterattacks going near the protection area, you must ask yourself the following. Where did the offensive action begin and where did it score? Where did the counterattack begin? Counterattacks in the protection area equals no score. Offensive wrestler initiates an action inbounds. That action will be allowed to continue and scored appropriately, even if it goes into the protection area, regardless of which wrestler touches out of bounds first. However, counterattacks cannot be scored when initiated in the protection area. Example 94 applies. Red initiates a throw inbounds, causing blue to go to his back just outside in the protection area. Since blue landed in the protection area, blue cannot initiate a counterattack. 
Once red landed in the protection area, the action stops. Evaluation note. Take note where the defensive wrestler landed. Counterattacks. Going into, into the protection area equals possible score. Offensive wrestler initiates an action while in the wrestling area and completes the action on the edge. The defensive wrestler can immediately counterattack going into the protection area. The defensive wrestler initiated his or her counteraction inbounds. Example 95. Blue initiates a throw inbound, causing red to go to his back inbounds on the edge. Since red landed in the central wrestling area, red can initiate a counterattack into the protection area. Evaluation note. Take note where the defensive wrestler landed. Chapter 11. Negative wrestling, fleeing, brutality, and passivity. These are all interrelated. Each of these categories adopt a negative approach to a bout by one or both wrestlers. The basic principle of a bout is total wrestling. Referees should encourage and stimulate activity at the appropriate times throughout the bout. The indicators and evaluation principles apply for all four situations across both styles of wrestling. Negative wrestling. Actions that are potentially dangerous or contrary to the basic principle of total wrestling, such as interlocking, grabbing fingers, head in the chest, blocking, pushing on the face, blocking with one or both hands, or offensive pushing, avoiding contact. Interlocking or grabbing the fingers. Evaluation note. Grabbing fingers and twisting, bending fingers must be distinguished from each other. Grabbing fingers is more negative wrestling, where twisting, bending the figure, fingers falls more into the brutality category. In figure 96, red is interlocking with blue and is bending blue's hand back. Figure 97, red is twisting blue's fingers. Figure 98, Red is grabbing and bending the fingers backwards. This action could be deemed brutality. Grabbing the hands, wrists without starting an attack. Figure 99. When you see grabbing the fingers, tell the offending wrestlers, open, no fingers. Indicate, indicators of who is locking the fingers. When trying to determine which wrestler is guilty of locking the fingers, evaluate hand position. In figure 101, both wrestlers have equal hand position. Both are guilty. In figure 102, blue has an open hand. Red is beginning to grasp the fingers. In 103, red has an open hand. Blue has a firm grasp on the fingers. 104, blue's head is down and has a firm lock on red's fingers. As you evaluate the fingers, also watch head position. The wrestler who is grabbing fingers will more than likely be blocking with the head. Head and chest. The head and the chest is a defensive blocking tactic used to neutralize an offensive wrestler's tactics discussed in Chapter 7, evaluating the action. When you see the head down in a blocking position, tell the offending up. 105 and 106 apply. Blocking, pushing on the face. When the attacking wrestler is hooking, the defensive wrestler blocks, pushes the attacker's face with one or two hands. Blocking with one or both hands. Thumb position, blocking. Pay attention to the thumbs. Wrestlers will use their thumbs to hook an opponent in order to block. Offensive pushing. A wrestler that is deliberately pushing his or her opponent into the protection area will typically have arms extended, not use legitimate offensive techniques, and will stop just before the edge. Fleeing the hold. Avoiding contact to prevent being scored upon. This can occur in either standing or parterre wrestling at any point but most often occurs when time is running out. Standing, 
Verbally and visually set up your call. After the verbal warning, if no improvement, stop about giving attention. Use proper UWW vocabulary. After the attention, give the offensive wrestler opportunity to adjust. If there is still no improvement, stop the bout and ask for fleeing the hold penalty. This will keep time on the clock and will prevent further issues from occurring. Tell the wrestler they are fleeing the hold so they know why they are being punished. Parterre. Verbally and visually set up the call. If the bottom wrestler is closed and won't open, don't give a couple of open commands and then stand them up. You will be rewarding the bottom wrestler for staying closed. Slap the mat and give an open command to the bottom wrestler. If the bottom wrestler still won't open, ask for a fleeing the hold penalty. Leave the bottom wrestler down until they open up or penalized. Don't le let the bottom wrestler stay closed and dictate the bout to you. Give the top wrestler a fair chance to score. If the wrestler under attack drops to their knees in the zone and then gets driven into the protection area, Think about fleeing the hold. They are dropping down to sti simulate being in a parterre so they won't give up any points when they go into the protection area. If a wrestler is sprawling, they have a responsibility to circle and stay on the mat. Fleeing the mat. Defensive wrestler must defend their position. Look at the entire sequence, action sequence. Common mistake, only evaluating the last action, folk style. If a wrestler standing or parterre makes no attempt to stay on the mat, they are fleeing and penalized accordingly. Figure four, oh, four things to ask yourself when evaluating the action. Where did the action begin? Center, zone, edge. Who was the aggressor? red or blue how did they get to the edge swam backed up wrestled what took them out of bounds bailed crawled wrestled did the wrestler move to the edge stop defending and walk back out of bounds make sure you give the command red blue zone this will set up a fleeing the mat call Quad pod situation on the edge. Watch for the defensive wrestler crawling out of bounds. Offensive wrestler cannot lift and carry the defensive wrestler to the edge and place them in the protection area. This would be offensive fleeing. Parterre. Did the defensive wrestler purposely place their head in the protection area? Close to the edge, watch the defender's eyes. If the wrestler is glancing at the edge, he or she is looking for an escape. Make sure you give the command red, blue, place to the defensive wrestler. This will set up a fleeing the mat call. Danger. Both wrestlers have a responsibility to stay in bounds. If the defensive wrestler is in a bridge, and only the head is touching the mat while trying to maintain the bridge, he, she slides out of bounds. This is not fleeing the mat. They can only go one way. If the defensive wrestler is on their back and is actively using their elbows and hands to get out of bounds, this would be fleeing the mat. Brutality. When the wrestlers start putting their hands in the face, tell both wrestlers, no hands in the face. If they continue, stop the bout, give an attention to the offending wrestler, and tell them no hands to the face. If they still continue, stop the bout and request a caution and points for the illegal action. Hands in the face will cause fingers, thumbs to get into the eyes and potentially could lead to hard shots to the head. Blocking, pushing, grabbing the throat. Blocking, pushing, or grabbing the face or throat is a negative wrestling tactic used by defensive wrestlers 
to quickly neutralize an offensive wrestler's attack. Attacking the throat can be as subtle as laying an arm across the throat to blatantly choking an opponent. Pay close attention to the thumb. Although small, the thumb is a very powerful tool to illegally hook the throat. The thumb is very subtle negative wrestling technique. Once identified and a wrestler continues to execute negative wrestling techniques or tactics, you can penalize them accordingly. Ensure everyone knows why you are penalizing a wrestler. Clubbing or hard shot to the head. The first hard shot to the head with the hand, elbow, or shoulder. Stop the bout. Give an attention to the offending wrestler and tell them to stop. When make sure you tell the other wrestler not to retaliate. They will want to get their shot in. Make them shake hands. This can help diffuse the situation. Headbutt. Pay close attention to the level of the heads. When the heads are on different planes, headbutts can will occur. Headbutts can be very subtle and quick, so pay very close attention when the heads start coming together. Twisting, bending fingers. Evaluation note. Grabbing fingers and twisting, bending fingers must be distinguished from each other. Grabbing fingers is more negative wrestling, where twisting, bending the fingers falls more into the brutality category. In figure 139, this could be deemed brutality due to the fingers being bent backwards. Twisting arms or legs. Watch the defensive wrestler's arms, legs. Um, move to the side, the leg or arm is being pressed, pulled. Do not lay let the leg or arm be used as a lever to illegally force the defensive wrestler to give up position, get turned. Passivity. A penalty for not actively scoring points or attempting to score points. Passivity is not stalling. Stalling, according to the National Federation of High School Wrestling Rules, each wrestler is required to make an honest attempt to stay within the 10-foot circle and wrestle aggressively, regardless of position or the time or the score of the match. Within international wrestling, passivity is determined to be a lack of scoring or lack of attempting to score. Philosophy. Just because you're doing something doesn't mean anything. If you haven't scored, you're passive. The absence of scoring is the absence of action. Roy Scott. Technical passivity. Looking really good with lots of movement, but not scoring. There is difference between attacking and moving forward. Do not confuse movement with progression. When evaluating action to determine if a wrestler is just moving forward or creating offensive action attacking, there are several indicators to differentiate between the two actions. A wrestler that is just moving forward motion will display a lot of movement and expend a great deal of energy but will take very little risk or no real offensive action. They will give the illusion of offense but in actuality they are technically passive. Moving forward actions include locking up, moving forward not attacking or just push away, moving up and down but no real attempt to attack. Moving side to side, but again, no real attempt to attack. Moving forward is part of the off offensive action. However, it's, only, it's not the only part. A wrestler that is attempting to score technical points will use offensive techniques and take risks. 
In addition, the offensive wrestler will also use the seven basic wrestling skills. Stance, motion, level change, penetration, lift, backstep, and back arch. Don't get tunnel vision on one skill. A wrestler must utilize numerous skills during the legitimate offensive action. Criteria to considering when evaluating passivity. Evading attacks without counterattacks. Satisfy with neutralizing the offensive wrestler's attack. Attacking without any direct contact with an opponent. Not making a genuine effort to score. Fake attacks. Not taking proper holds. Defensive wrestling. Having a great hold and not improving. Giving up mat position. Not able to control the center. No hooking despite good position. Regaining initial position right after beginning an attack. Crawling forward. Swimming without attempting a counterattack. Holding opponent in the orange zone. Moving into and staying in the orange zone. What is not passivity? One wrestler has scored a lot of points. After a wrestler has scored points, the opponent acts offensively for a short period of time. Wrestler who is losing by points continues to fight in an offensive manner. What is not active? Wrestling without action. Not Continuing to set up an attack despite being in a good starting position or hooking position. Simulate to be and only control the opponent. How to identify the Greco-Roman freestyle passivity. A new analytical paradigm shifts our evaluation focus from inactivity, passivity, to evaluating, analyzing activity and who is trying to score. If you can identify the active wrestler, then the passive wrestler will be readily apparent. Greco-Roman activity. When evaluating Greco-Roman activity, look for the following three things. Contact. Who is trying to stay in contact and not always trying to break it? Hooking. Who is trying to hook one or both arms or the body or a combination of them? Setting up attacks. Once a wrestler has a hook, they are trying to set up an actual move or get their opponent out of their stance. The key identifier for Greco-Roman activity is to look for is hooking. Greco-Roman hooking target areas. Hooking target areas include the head, neck, arms, and body. Greco-Roman hooking. A wrestler, a wrestler trying to hook one arm, both arms... Or the body of their opponent or a combination of them overhooks, underhooks, body locks, arm and body lock, headlock, etc. If one wrestler is hooking or trying to hook their opponent, they would be active wrestler and the other wrestler would be passive. Philosophy. When a wrestler has a great hold, such as an underhook, body lock, or two-on-one, they should be aggressively working to score. How long do you allow them to retain the great hold without working for a score? It takes a lot of effort to secure a great hold, but it is not acceptable to just hang and not attempt to score. This type of offensive inaction could be deemed as offensive passivity. If both wrestlers are actively hooking, no call should be required because points should be scored. If neither wrestler is actively hooking, stimulate the action by verbalizing to the athletes. Look for the athlete that may be controlling the center. Make sure one wrestler is not blocking or controlling the wrists or hands to prevent locking. Freestyle activity. When evaluating freestyle activity, look for the following three things. Hands. Who's grabbing and hanging on the hands? Center mat dominance. Who's controlling the center of the mat? Attacks. 
who's actually taking risk and attacking. Referee, judge, chairman, passivity, teamwork. Verbalization and clock management are the keys for the team to work together in order to make timely and accurate passivity calls during a bout. The referee sets the stage for the judge and chairman. Referee verbalization lets the judge, chairman, coaches, and wrestlers know who is being identified for passivity. Referee eye scan should non-verbally signal the referee team your intention. Example, red action, no action, red action, no action. I scan the judge chairman. Red action. No attack. Signal red passivity. You've given multiple commands. Allowed time for the passive wrestler to attack, score, and I scan the judge chair. You have set up the passivity call for the referee team. Every bout is different. Expect every bout to be 0-0. Zero, zero. You must have an understanding of what is taking place during the bout. If a wrestler has been aggressive, taken risks, and scored technical points, reward their efforts. Philosophy. If a wrestler has scored technical points, they have earned the right to be technically passive up to a point. Do not let the wrestler with the lead take advantage of you. The effort that goes with the technical points scored should determine technical passivity. Once you have points on the board, you have a winner. You can ease off passivity. However, it does not go away entirely. Philosophy. You have a responsibility not to punish the wrestler that has earned the lead by penalizing him or her with overly strict calls or not rewarding risk. Philosophy. When all is even, sometimes you may just have to pick someone. Freestyle example. In a 0-0 bout, the freestyle passivity warning times depicted below are a guide. Scoring or lack of scoring will dictate your passivity calls. First period. 3 minutes to 2.20. Passivity call. V warning. 220 to 140, passivity call, V or P, inactive activity period. Passivity call, 140 to 1, V or P, activity period. Evaluate the action, who is being passive. The first period should end with three passivity calls and one activity period. If you make a fourth passivity call in the first period, what is your plan for the second period? This call will make it very difficult to properly manage the bout. Second period, 3 to 220, passivity call, P, activity period, 220 to 120, passivity, fifth passivity call, P, activity period. This call may determine the winner. There is enough time remaining for the losing wrestler to score with a minute 20 left. If no technical points have scored and the only score is from passivity, look at the wrestler that has received the passivity points for technical passivity. If this, in the second period, if putting a wrestler on the second activity period or a call that could result in parterre will decide the bout. Ensure there is enough time remaining in the bout after the penalty period completed so that the losing wrestler has the time and an opportunity to win the bout. Philosophy. If a wrestler has been hit with passivity and has given up points, it's not their right to be reciprocated. They have to earn it. Philosophy. If there is no score... It is imperative you make timely passivity calls. If the wrestlers won't score, use your passivity calls to score for them. If a bout is determined solely on passivity calls, and it will happen, ensure you have managed the bout and arrive at a score of 2-1, to one, not 1-0 one or 1-1. One, one. 
Although we never want to determine the outcome of a bout, sometimes the wrestlers force us to make these decisions. The end of the bout should be easy to understand the winner and 2-1 to one achieves that goal. Freestyle example in a bout with first period scoring. The freestyle passivity call times depicted below are a guide. Red and blue, zero. Above passivity guidelines. Red, two, blue, zero. Red scored an early takedown. Perhaps passivity warning on each, but no activity period. Timing is important. Red, one, blue, zero. Blue steps out under attack. P activity period is still an option. Timing is important. Red, three, blue, two. Possible for a first passivity warning. No activity period needed. Red 5, blue 4. No P activity period needed. Both wrestlers are scoring points. Red 6, blue 0. No P activity period needed. Red is dominating blue. Philosophy. If a wrestler has scored substantial points for or more, passivity may not be an appropriate call. They have scored technical points. Fleeing the hold may be more appropriate. It cannot be overstated the importance of intelligent thought when evaluating passivity activity, how many points have scored, when point were scored, etc. Your ability to properly manage time, time management, chapter 6, and take into consideration the totality of the bout, total bout concept, chapter 15, will play a significant role in the evaluation of passivity. Greco-Roman example, in a 0-0 bout, the Greco-Roman passivity warning Times depicted below are our guide. The ex exception to this timeline is calls cannot be made prior to USA 1 minute or UWW 2 in the first period and prior to USA 130 or UWW 430 in the second period. If no technical points have been scored and the only score is from passivity, look at the wrestler that has received the passivity points for technical passivity. Greco-Roman evaluation note. A wrestler who has scored points by executing holds and standing wrestling should not be punished with the passivity. However, if this wrestler is inactive for a certain amount of time and his opponent scored points or is clearly more active, he can receive a passivity. Additional points. You can stop the bout and talk to wrestler without giving an official warning. If wrestler is in parterre because of passivity, give the top wrestler plenty of time to work. Three, Greco-Roman scenarios, refereeing team needs to stimulate about with a passivity call. Score is 0-0 after two minutes. Score is tied and one wrestler is clearly more active. Three, one wrestler has led and his opponent acts too defensively. It cannot be overstated the importance of intelligent thought when evaluating passivity activity, how points have been scored, when points were scored, etc. A wrestler who has scored points by executing holds in standing wrestling should not be punished with the passivity. However, if this wrestler is inactive for a certain amount of time and his opponent scored points or is clearly more active, he can receive a passivity. Your ability to properly manage bout time. Time management, chapter 6. Recognize passivity indicators. Passivity, chapter 13. And evaluating the totality of the bout, total bout concept, will play a significant role in your evaluating evaluation process of passivity. Many times the wrong passivity call is made. Evaluate the entire bout, the total bout concept. How were points scored and how many? In figure 156, blue has the lead. Blue has been scoring points. Why would you penalize blue with passivity? You shouldn't. Blue may be slowing down. However, he is in good position and maintaining contact. Conversely, red has his head down, hips back, and grabbing fingers. Think to yourself, why penalize with passivity if they are scoring points? 
Too many referees want to hit the wrong wrestler with passivity. You must continually think. Chapter 12. Total Bout Concept. As you evaluate negative wrestling, passivity, or fleeing the hold calls, you must keep the totality of the bout in mind. Who has scored points? How many and when? Who has been the aggressor and who has been passive? How much time is remaining in the period or bout? Must constantly think of the wrestler who has scored points from actions. Most understand the significance and impacts of your passivity and fleeing the hold calls in relation to the entire bout. Do not let passivity determine the outcome of a bout if one wrestler has been scoring points. Typically, late in the bout with time running out is when the total bout concept will come into your evaluation thought process. Example. Red has scored points and been more active than blue. There is 28 seconds remaining in the bout. For the last 10 seconds, red has slow significantly and has begun to protect his lead. At this point, you must take into consideration the totality of the bout and everything Red has done throughout the course of the bout, total bout concept, not just the last 10 seconds. Why would you immediately penalize Red when he, she has scored points and has been active for 5 minutes and 22 seconds? You shouldn't. Always think about the totality of the bout and not just the last few seconds. Macro evaluation to micro evaluation process. When you begin to evaluate passivity or fleeing the hold, start with macro evaluation and work toward inward towards a micro evaluation. Macro evaluations analyze overall body positioning and mannerisms in order to help identify the aggressive and passive wrestler. Offensive indicators center mat dominance, maintaining contact, attacking. Defensive indicators, head position, hip position, avoiding contact, negative wrestling. Micro-evaluations analyze the inside fight. You must look inside in order to evaluate the subtle action. Offensive indicators, hooking, setting up attacks, inside control. Defensive indicators, forearm position, hand position, pushing or grabbing, thumb position, Blocking. Example. Macro evaluation. Figure 157 and 158. Red. Attacking. Heads up. Hips in. Blue. Defending. Hips going back. Head going down. Micro evaluation. Figure 158 applies. Red. Right arm underhooky. Blue. Left arm pinching Red's underhook. Left hand blocking on the chest. Right hand blocking on Red's bicep. Verbal, using verbal warnings and attentions effectively. Verbal warning figure 159 applies. If a wrestler has a substantial lead and is slowing down, so what? They have earned the right to be technically passive up to a point. You do not need to immediately penalize them. Before penalizing the winning wrestler, ask yourself, what has the losing wrestler done to warrant the winning wrestling wrestler to get penalized? You can give the winning wrestler a few commands, except, uh, blue action, blue contact, etc. This helps with clock management and also lets the winning wrestler know they are being passive. Attention. If you are at the point in the bout where the winning wrestler has received numerous verbal warnings and passivity is not the most appropriate call, you may consider fleeing the hold. If you decide to go with fleeing the hold, you must first give an attention. Example, blue action, blue action, no improvement, stop the bout, blue, attention, action. It is very important when giving an attention that everybody knows why you are giving the attention as the next call will be a penalty. Chapter 13. Fouls and Illegal Holds Defensive Foul
fall in the same direction. Let the action continue, allowing the offensive wrestler to score. After the action is complete, stop the bout and penalize accordingly. Foul that changes direction. Stop the action and penalize accordingly. Offensive wrestler cannot re-attack after the change of direction. Defensive illegal hold. Unless possible injury, let the action continue, allowing the offensive wrestler to score. After the action is complete, stop the bout and penalize accordingly. Offensive foul, illegal hold. Stop the action. Offensive wrestler loses his or her position. If the offensive wrestler repeats a foul, freestyle or greco, you can penalize them. The first time an offensive foul occurs, attention. The second time an offensive foul occurs, penalize accordingly. The offensive wrestler cannot score using an illegal hold. Pike position. If the defensive wrestler is lifted and the action stops or hesitates while they are in the pike position, stop the action immediately. At no time should the offensive wrestler be allowed to return, drop, or slam the defensive wrestler to the mat on their head while in that position. Chapter 14, Greco-Roman Leg Fouls. Legs are going to touch. Just because the legs touch... Sorry. Give me one second. Oh, come on. Oh, there it is. All right. Oh, Christ. Technical difficulties. Here we go. Legs are going to touch. Just because the legs touch or, or are touched does not mean it's a foul. Was an advantage gained by the contact? Did the wrestler actively use the legs or actively touch the legs? Before blowing the whistle, get confirmation for the leg foul. If you get confirmation, stop the bout at the appropriate time, penalize, and restart accordingly. If you do not get confirmation, keep wrestling. Incidental leg contact, no foul. Offensive leg foul. Pay close attention to the offensive wrestler subtly using the knees or feet to trip. Was an advantage gained by the contact? Attempts to block an offensive score. If you see a defensive foul, signal the foul and let the action continue, giving the offensive wrestler a chance to complete the action and score. Ensure you watch the entire sequence. Action. Once the action is complete, score the offensive points and penalize the foul accordingly. In figures 81, 82, and 83, blue lifts red and begins a throw. In figures 84, in 85, red holds blue's leg during the throwing action attempt thing to prevent landing in danger. In figure 86, blue completes the throw with red lands in danger. By allowing the action to continue, blue will score the throw points and also get rewarded for red's fall. Parterre leg falls. Lifting a leg is not necessarily a foul. Lifting a leg must prevent the offensive wrestler from stepping over or getting to the side. If lifting a leg prevents an action, it doesn't matter if it's straight or bent. The difference between a good counterattack and a foul can be very small. 
step back so you can see the entire action sequence. In figure 188, Red's hand is above the hip. Good defense. In figure 89, Red hand is below the hip. Foul. The difference between good defense and a foul can be inches. Visually communicating a foul illegal hold to the referee team. When you see a foul illegal hold, point at the infraction. Pointing alerts to the judge and chairman you have identified a possible foul illegal hold. Don't be in a hurry to blow the whistle. Get confirmation. If the foul illegal hold could cause injury, stop the bout immediately and penalize accordingly. If the foul illegal hold will not cause injury, allow the action to continue and appropriately score the action, then penalize. Understanding the impacts of penalties. You must understand what's going on in the bout and how cautions, passivities can affect the outcome of the bout. Don't over-officiate and penalize with overly strict calls. Late in the bout, make sure you know what passivity or fleeing the whole call will do in the bout. Will it decide the winner or change the outcome of the bout? Chapter 6. Team, have the courage to make a bout defining call. Your number one priority is to let the wrestlers decide the winners. Winner. In most cases, there are rules in place so the wrestlers can decide the winner. However, if you are in a situation and required to make this call, you have exhausted all other options. You have set up the call extremely well. Everyone, the referee team, coaches, and wrestlers know the call is coming. Ensure there is enough time remaining on the clock for the offending wrestler to attempt to win the bout. Chapter 17, End of Bout. When the bout is ended, you should be the last one off the mat. After you raise the winner's hand, step to a position where you can observe both wrestlers until they have left the mat. Do not turn your back or take your eyes off the wrestlers, regardless of how quiet or polite the bout has been. Punches, fights, etc. can erupt without any indications or provocations. Once the wrestlers are off the mat, you can leave the mat. Chapter 18. Judge Mechanics. A strong or weak judge can make or break the referee team. Call your own bout. The referee and judge are a team and must work together. The judge is not required to agree with the referee. Offer options to the chairman when pertinent. Don't offer options just to offer something different. This could backfire on you and your option could get confirmed and the wrong wrestler could get undeserved points or win the bout. Be selective when giving options. Sit emotionless. No excessive movements. Do not draw attention to yourself. Philosophy. Whenever you move your hands should either be writing a score on the scorecard or raising, lowering a paddle. If you see a foul, signal caution. Get the chairman's attention. Don't get into a discussion with the coach. That is the chairman's job. Your understanding of what is taking place in the bout can help or sink the referee. You need to be comfortable and proficient using the white paddle. Proper scoring paddle mechanics. Do not play with the paddles. Score the action by raising the paddle over your head. Pause. Set it down. Continue watching the action. Once the action has stopped, mark the scorecard. Do not look down at the scorecard until the action has stopped. You may miss an action. When scoring multiple actions, raise only one colored paddle at a time. In the order the points are scored, do not hold up multiple paddles at the same time. Proper paddle mechanics. White paddle. Single scoring action. Multiple scoring actions.
Caution and points. Proper scoring panel mechanics in support of passivity. If you do not agree with the referee's call, do not raise the opposite colored paddle. If the referee asks for one color red, as a judge you have several options. Confirm the call, raise the appropriate colored paddle red. Disagree with the call, raise the white paddle and allow the chairman to make a call. Opposite color is passive. Raise the white paddle, disagreeing with the initial call. Set the white paddle down, then raise the opposite colored paddle red, indicating you are identifying red as being passive, not blue. Improper scoring paddle mechanics. Paddle out to the side. Palming the paddle in front of face. Caution and points paddle out to the side. Both colors simultaneously. Paddle held very low. Holding paddle looking down during action. Proper seating during a bout. Hands in your lap. Hands on the edge of the table. Improper seating during a bout. Playing with the paddles. Head in your hand looking bored. Lounging. Talking to the coaches. Chapter 19. Chairman Mechanics. Philosophy. There is a difference between sitting as a mat chairman and being the mat chairman leader. Chairman Responsibilities. You are the calm in the storm. Solve issues. Don't be the cause of them. Controls the mat and is poised to meet all uncertainty with professionalism. Have a solid understanding of the rules. Knows the strengths and weaknesses of their team. Who can you put in tough situations and what position is each official best? Recognizes when high-level bouts are coming to their mat and places the team in the best position to be successful. Extremely attentive and focused on the task at hand. Can work with all officials and ensure everyone on the team is involved. Dealing with coaches. To get respect, you must be respectful. Have a logical explanation to their question. You don't have to agree with the call, but you should be able to justify, explain it. If you can't give an answer, do not make something up. You must know when a conference is needed and when to leave the situation alone. Coordinate the work of the referee and the judge. Evaluate their referees in a fair and honest manner and give criticism when necessary. Follow the course of the bouts very carefully without distractions. Be decisive. If referee and judge don't agree, you must make the decision. Never be the first to give an opinion of an action. Must confirm falls in passivity. Interrupt the bout if a serious mistake is made by the referee. Chairman calling the conference. When is a conference needed? You see a foul that others didn't. Leg foul. You see a blatant error in scoring and could have impact on the outcome of the match. Conference mechanics. Keep it quick, short, and to the point. Matt Chairman will do most of the talking. Should offer their opinion on the situation. Mass, Matt Chairman must be 100% correct on their opinion if calling a conference. Red and yellow card. Your red and yellow card should not be placed on the table in open view. Only Openly displaying your red yellow cards indicate you have taken an adversarial position with the coaches and are not approachable. However, your cards must be readily accessible, but out of sight. Presenting a coach with a red or yellow card should be your last option. Referee and judge being called for a conference. Ask yourself why. Why is the chairman calling a conference? Chairman has an agenda for a conference. May have seen something that the referee and judge did not. May want to clarify what happened may be appeasing a coach. Listen carefully and answer accordingly. 
be very open-minded and flexible. Answer the chairman's question, and that's all. It's not a debate. Don't offer alternative possibilities, opinions, and solutions, or defend your call during a conference. Your response should be short to the point. Communicating with the team. Before the session, introduce yourself if you do not know them. Discuss important points of what you are looking for and how you want the mat to work. Discuss the main points from the preseason clinic. Make sure that they are relaxed and you do not put more added stress on the team. During the session, don't discuss a tough situation that coaches got heated right after it happens. Wait a few matches. Make sure that your team gets a break and they have a chance to step away. Take time to get to know each official better when you are rotated out. After the session, discuss how the session went. Try to focus on the positives. Go over evaluations with each official. Thank each of your teammates for their help. Working with volunteer table workers. Be respectful. They are volunteers. Just like you. Ask them what you can do to make their job easier. Communicate with them about how to do things or things that you would like to have done, such as counting down at specific times, posting points, etc. Keep conversations professional and not personal. The challenge we will bypass in chapter 21, when disaster strikes, and it will. Not every bout will go well. You will have that special bout when disaster strikes and you make a bad call. The referee team is out of sync or you get disciplined. When this happens, don't panic and handle the situation with professionalism. If you make a mistake or bad call and get disciplined, own it, learn from it, and let, let it go. Don't lose your composure, become emotional, or argue with the tournament delegation, head referee, clinician, or Matt chairman. Your reaction and conduct after the disciplinary action will have a longer lasting and greater impact than what got you into trouble. Final thoughts. You must be the consummate professional when working a tournament. Wrestling fans, coaches, athletes, and other referees are watching and judging your every action. Your behavior will dictate how you are treated by others. Be professional. When you are away from the tournament venue, ensure you maintain your professional behavior. Regardless of being on the mat or in the restaurant, you are still a referee. It takes years to build your professional credibility, but only one error in judgment can ruin all your hard work. Ensure you get plenty of rest, proper hydration, and good nutrition in order to meet the high demands that most tournaments often dictate. Over multi-day tournaments, rest, nutrition, and hydration will be very important. You will meet some great people, referees, coaches, wrestlers, and fans, and forge lifelong friendships. No matter what happens during your referee career, you can never take, they can never take your memories, Zach Herrick. Bottom line, have fun and enjoy yourself. All right. List of figures and photog photographs. And that's the end of one hour and four minutes.